Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the PE to CE protocols static learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. In the topology, we have a provider network set up, a service provider that is, and we have the P routers, one, two, and three. Then we got the two PE routers, PE1 and PE2, and then two CE routers, CE1 and CE2. And then connected to those CE routers, we have host one, which is 10.1.2.1, and it's within the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 subnet. And then host two, which is 10.4.1.1, and it's within the 10.4.1.0 slash 24 subnet. And then for our purposes, we are going to be configuring PE1 and PE2. The L3 VPN is already mostly configured. We're going to focus on configuring static routing as the PE to CE protocol. And so we don't need to worry about setting up the VPN there. We just got to set up that protocol. And then that's going to be within the red VPN on PE1 and PE2, as you can see in the topology. And all everything else, the transport with between PE1 to PE2 is all set up with MPLS. BGP is working fine. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is PE1. First, let's look at the BGP session. We can see here that we do have a BGP session with this BGP pair, and that is PE2. And you see it's established, everything looks good there. We are getting some routes. So let's actually look at those route tables. Let's do the show route table red. And we get the red VPN tables we got for INET0 and INET6. We're mainly interested in INET.0 here. And you can see that, okay, we're getting a route. But that is not the 10.4.1.0/24 route. This route here is for the link between PE2 and CE2. And that's good. Since we haven't set up any PE to CE routing protocols, that's what we should see. So we can see the VPN is functioning correctly. And we can look at the, the BGP L3 VPN table. And we can see that route is also there. And that's good. That's what we want to see. We verified that the L3 VPN is working. And we could do the same on PE2. We'd seen similar results. So I'm not going to jump to PE2 for the sake of time. So let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode and then go to the routing instance. And it's going to be the red VPN. You can see we have the VPN configured, but we need to configure static routing. So we need to configure the static routing, and that's going to be under routing options, static. And we need to configure the static route that is for host one's network. And that's going to be 10.1.2.0 slash 24. I guess I have to specify route first, right? 10.1.2.0/24, and then we have to give it the next hop. Now, next hop is going to be the directly connected interface of CE1, and that is 10.1.0.1, and that's really all we have to configure there. And what will happen here is, since this is a instance type VRF, and it's part of an L3 VPN, and the L3 VPN is working, we got the route target, the route distinguisher, everything there. That'll automatically get redistributed into BGP and sent to the PE2 router. So let's go ahead and commit that configuration. And then we'll jump to PE2 and configure the static routing there. So here is PE2. Go into routing, instances, red. You can see here we have nothing configured for static routing. So set routing, option static route. And we're going to specify the, the network that is a part of host2. And so dot four dot one dot zero slash twenty four next hop we're going to say ten dot four dot zero dot one now that next hop is the interface address of the directly connected c e two device, and that's all we need to do there so let's go ahead and commit that configuration and then let's jump back to p e one since we were originally looking at p e one let's do the run show route actually let's do the run show b g p summary and you can see here things have changed now we have two routes showing up in both those routing tables. So let's take a look at those routing tables. We can see here that, okay, good, we have a new route here. And this is the route that represents host2 network, the host2's network, that is. And you can see here that we're getting a label pushed on top. We're getting two labels, so the VPN label and then the MPLS label. And this is, we're using LDP here. And so that's the signaling protocol for MPLS. And so we are getting labels pushed on top. And notice how it is the same for the interface route because they're both going the same direction. They're both part of the same VPN. And so we can do the run show route 
uh, table BGP L3 VPN, and you can see that additional route is there, or the route that represents the host to network. And so perfect, that's what we want to see. Now let's take a look at the advertising protocol run show route uh, BGP advertising protocol that is BGP and what was that address 172.17.20.6 we can see we're advertising and yeah okay we're advertising the 10.1.2.0/24 route and remember that there was no policy that said redistribute static routes into BGP and accept and we didn't have to apply that to BGP that all happened automatically and so that's that's perfect that's what we want to see there and you don't have to do the extra work of configuring routing policies and we can put the detail command on that, get a little more information. We can see the, the AS path. We see the route target community. We see the VPN label as well. We kind of saw that when we looked at the route table and as well as the route distinguisher. And so you can see what's going on. And so let's actually just change the advertising protocol to the receive protocol and see what we're getting from our PE2 neighbor. And you can see here that we are getting some routes and it's the same type of deal. It's the this is the route for the uh, the host two network, and we see the route target. We see the AS path, and we can see the next hop as well. A VPN label, route distinguisher. We see that was accepted, and so it matches the uh, the route target. The route targets are the same, and so great. That's exactly what we want to see. And so real quick, let's jump to PE two. I do want to show you the route tables there. And we can see here that we are also receiving the host one route. And so perfect, that's what we want to see. The subnets associated with host one, we can see we're pushing that VPN label and then pushing an uh, LDP label on top of that. So that looks really good. And if we do the run show route table and we look at the BGP table for L3 VPN, we can see that we also have that here. And that's perfect, that's exactly what we want to see. We see the route as well as with the, uh, the route distinguisher. And so we can see that it is, this is the route distinguisher we had configured on PE1. Like if we jump back to PE1 and just show the routing instance, we see that was the route distinguisher we have configured. If we jump back to PE2, you can see, yes, we have route distinguisher, and then the route, that's what is placed in the BGP L3 VPN table. And then you can see the label operations and how to get to that route. And so great, that's what we should be seeing. It looks like we're passing routes correctly, but I always like to verify that communication can happen because we verified the control plane, but let's verify the forwarding plane as well. So let's go to the customer device. And this is a, uh, a virtual router that is split up. And so what I can do is I can ping the host one address and then a routing instance, there's a host two routing instance. So we're pinging from the host two routing instance. And we see things are working there. We did have a duplicate packet there, but with how this is set up in a, a virtual environment, that sometimes happens, but that's not a big deal. The first packet is just a duplicate packet. Every other packet after that isn't. And so great, we can see that we have communication happening and the L3 VPN is working with the static routing protocol configured to share routes through the VPN. So that does bring us to the end of this learning bite. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.